Welcome to Specific Love. This is the fourth edition of 20 French Cleat Ideas. Let's begin. Now having French cleats on your wall is the most common practice, but a lot of people forget you're not just limited to this. You can use cleats just about anywhere you have a nice, strong, sturdy surface. For example, I put them right here on the side of my cart. This is good because my cart can move around and I do a bunch of work on top of it, so I can put common tools right here on the side and I don't have to worry about it, constantly have to walk over and get them. For example, my tape measures, my safety glasses, and my mallet. But you can use whatever you want and put whatever you need right there at easy access. Now I might be a little bit old school, but I like to have a pen and paper handy just so I can write stuff down and draw if I need to. So I created this awesome little desk that mounts right here in the wall. Let me show you how I did this. Now for the top here, I'm using some 3 quarter inch plywood to give this full structure some strength. Not only does it allow you to press down really hard on here to write or draw, but it gives just the whole structure a real rigid feeling. On the sides here, I slope these down at about a 30 degree angle so that it gives your structure ability to write on it, but it's not fully flat and sticking straight out. On the back, on the top, I'm using a very large cleat just to give it some added strength because this not only supports the whole structure, but all the pressure are going to be used to writing on it. That way you don't accidentally rip it off the wall. Down here in the bottom, I added some support that not only supports it side to side, but against the walls, again, allows it to give it a little added strength. On the bottom, I just added an additional piece of wood to keep things from sliding off, but overall, this is a very simple design, and I hope you get a chance to make one. Next up is this pencil pen marker holder. I'm using some clear PVC here, just so you can see it real well, but of course, you don't have to use a clear version. I have these set at about a 30 degree angle, so it's real easy to grab and replace, and you can see these from across the shop. To hold this, I just took some regular pine lumber, and I cut it down just narrow enough so that I could wedge these right in place. Now, you can always glue them to make it nice and firm, but you don't necessarily have to as long as you have a really tight fit. Overall, real simple design that complements the desk really well, but you don't have to have it for the desk. You can have it just for your shop. Now here's a great way to store some of your levels and even your carpenter square. Now the, most of this design is pretty basic. Just a solid piece of wood. I drilled four holes at the top and I added some pegs. These will all hold the levels. Nothing really complicated. Now when you look across the top here, you'll notice there is a groove. This is to hold your carpenter square. I just use a table saw to cut a groove right down the top. And the great thing about a carpenter square is that the center of balance is right about here. So you don't have to worry about it trying to fall off the edge. So as long as you can get it right in that groove, which sometimes can be a little challenging, there we go, it'll sit nice and square along that. Just make sure you have it scooted all the way up to the edge here. You have nothing to worry about it falling. Cleaning supplies, especially those that come in bottle form, can easily get knocked over or misplaced. So, I created this awesome little holder so you can store them right on your wall. This design is very simplistic. It actually only has four pieces. Two side pieces which brace themselves against the cleat. You have your main cleat across the back which gives it most of its strength. And of course, you need a dowel or something, kind of rod that runs across the front here. Very simple, just drill a hole through the side pieces, glue everything together. One real easy way to store your spray bottles. Now I recently purchased this power inflator so that I can help with airing up tires or just the wife if she needs to check on her tires to make sure everything is good. So I needed a holder for it. I created this very simple design so that it can hang right there. Let me show you how to put this together. Now this is very simple. I actually used some old scrap wood. You can see all the dents and holes in it. It's roughly three quarters inch thick. For these arms reaching out, I made sure that they would fit just long enough so that I could have an additional lip right here so there's very little chance of this ever sliding off. For strength, I drilled and cut the holes all the way through this main back support, slid these in and glued them in place. Real simple, real easy. Now whenever I'm working on a lathe, I like to have this nice full face shield. So there's very little chance of me getting injured. So I created this awesome little holder for it. Yes, that is a foam head. I just thought it'd be quite funny for that to be seen on the wall as people walked in. The design is actually very simple for this. Let me take this head off. 
I have a lower piece that juts out just far enough so the head can sit on. I have a one inch dowel down here in the bottom so that the hole that came with on the head fits nicely over that. I have a couple additional pieces here to cut at a 45 degree angle just for added support. Probably don't need that, but I did that just to be safe. So slide on the head, add on your mask, and it's a nice funny holder when people come into your shop. If your shop's anything like mine, you like to have stuff mobile. So that's why I created this awesomely simple little wheel stop. Take three French cleats, face two of them toward each other, facing up. Take a third, facing at an angle, facing down. And now you just create a very simple little wheel stop using three cleats. And the best part, you can store it right on your wall. Paint brushes are awesome. We buy a bunch of them, we use a bunch, whether it's for staining or for painting. So I made this awesome little holder that allows you to store them right on your wall. Let me show you how to put it together. Now I have two pieces of wood here, running the full width, and they're both the same length. Now to space this apart, I just have some pieces of scrap wood here, but I made sure that the handles for the small ones and the handles for the big ones would all fit in there. I also tried to determine the full width of the wide, large paint brushes here so that they can easily fit against the wall without too much effort. And of course, you don't want to make it too wide or the little ones could fall through. Overall, real simple, real easy. Now if you have a grinding wheel, you know they can be really useful, but also they can be a pain because this large of a unit sitting right in the middle of your workbench can just be too much of a space hog. So, I have a great way to store it. Now I've attached this unit to a very thick 2x12. And that is to give it nice and strength across the bottom. You don't have to worry about it warping anytime soon. Plus it's a good hard surface to fit onto your workbench. Down here on the bottom you'll notice that I've attached a cleat to the right and left sides. And that way you can hang it from either side. But, on the bottom here, you notice I've used a bunch of screws. Yes, I'm using screws, but I've also glued both of these in here very well so that it not only will adhere and stick on it very well, but the screws will also bite into this upper piece of wood, basically giving it as much strength as possible on each side. Down here on the bolts, I've had to just lower them into the wood a little bit so they'll be nice and flush across the top. So make sure you realize that's going to weaken it just a little bit so make sure you have a good thick board. Now let's go test this out. Now most grinders are really heavy so when you put it up here, do it real gently. It's also a good idea to try to put it right over the studs where you have the screws going into the wall. That'll give it as much strength as possible at holding this nice and sturdy for a long time. Now here's a great way to store some of your smaller pliers. This is half inch pipe straps, just attached to some wood, painted strategically so it looks pretty, and let's hang it on the wall. And when you're putting this together, just make sure you leave just enough room so that all the pliers can easily go in and out. Now I love using my table saw, but sometimes I misplace my push sticks or push blocks. That is, until now. With an easy addition, to some French cleats. You can now store these on the wall right next to your table saw. I like to keep my shop clean, so I created this little holder for all the accessories for my vacuum. Let me show you how to make one. Now I started off with an old piece of plywood. This was actually from previous projects. You can see the stain marks still on them, but that's okay. It's nice and sturdy. It's three quarter inch roughly, and I knew it would work. For the holes here, I used a two and a half inch hole saw, and that seemed to work great for my tools here. It slides right in, but you can adjust to your size needed. It's real simple, I just have it glued in place and a French cleat on the back, and I'm using these side pieces for the strength on the wall. Real simple, real easy. And for this one, I create a simple little tool tote that stands on its own, but also stores on the wall. Let me show you how I did it. Now this is very simple. I just had a couple of pieces of cedar and I just glued them together to make it extra wide. Put a little carrier base down here in the bottom. You can put a bunch of loose stuff. Up top, I just doubled up the cedar so it'd be extra thick. And I drilled some holes so you can easily store screwdrivers. Over here, I'm just using some, this is thin walled one inch PVC. 
that I've cut with some 45 degree angles so that everything can be seen and grasped and pulled out real easily. I glued those together in between and screwed those in place. And then, of course, I just added a French cleat on the back. Made a nice little handle right up here on the top. It's a great little homemade carrier for your tools. And in number three of this series, I made an outlet protector that slid just right over top of it so you could still have access out the bottom, but it protected it from dust and debris. Now, one of our viewers named Kenneth Pink suggested turning the top of this into a phone charger. And so that is a great idea and what I did. I added a couple pieces of wood down on the bottom and on the sides so that way it can stay nice and sturdy and you don't have to worry about it falling off. I also have room for my cord to come out and of course the plug is underneath so that's easy and quick way to charge your phone just in case you have to while you're in the shop. Another one of our viewers that goes by JJ Mass W88 suggested taking a jar and attaching a lid to the bottom of one of the previous shelves that I had made. That way you can take a bunch of random objects, whether it's screws, nails, or whatever you want, put inside. You can hang it from the lid, and it's a great way to store a bunch of random stuff. Now here's a simple way to store your keys and your gloves all in one spot. If you're anything like me, you have more than one set of keys, so it's nice to just hang some up somewhere. So I did that with just a couple hooks up the top. For the base back here, this is just a couple pieces of cedar I glued together. And down at the bottom, I'm using some binder clips with a big washer and a large screw to make sure it's nice and secure when you're bending on this. And that'll allow you to easily attach your gloves however you wish. You can store both of them in one place. If you like labeling things in your shop, I definitely suggest getting one of these P-Touch labelers. I also built a nice housing, not only for the main unit, but also for spare tape. I'll show you how to make this. Now this is actually pretty simple. The back is about an eighth inch plywood, and I've just used plywood all around. If you notice, this right here is almost in a V shape. That's how it fits the contour of the body, and it's nice and secure. And I just used a piece in the front here just to make sure it wouldn't fall out the front. Now for the cartridge holder, it's real simple. Just basically an open box. I do have a lip here on both sides to keep anything from falling out the front. I also drilled out a hole here so I could easily get my fingers up underneath them. Real simple, real easy. Hope you can make one of these. In the process of making this video, I actually added a few more cleats to this wall. But that's where my first aid kit used to be, right? Well, guess what? I added a French cleat to the back of it too. But now that I got to thinking about it, before, if somebody got injured, they had to come to the unit. Now, I can take it off the wall and take it to them. So. This is a great way to not only have a first aid kit, but to be able to get it to where it needs to go quickly. If you ever do any recording in your shop, you're always gonna be worried about the echo and just the sound quality. And that's how I came up with this sound panel. It's actually very simple. Just a piece of hardboard that I've hot glued a bunch of these panels onto. And this will help keep down on echo and any other sounds going around. It's really easy, you can pick it up, move it around, place it against walls, wherever you need to, and that will help too. So great idea, if you want to record, watch out for your sound quality. Now if you enjoyed this video, I have three other ones with a whole bunch of other cool French cleat ideas. I'll put a link to those in the description below, so make sure you check those out. Now if you liked all these ideas, I hope I earned your subscription. And if I did, make sure to hit that subscribe button and check that notification bell because I have a whole lot more videos coming in the future. I also recently signed up the Patreon, so if you feel like you want to contribute and help toward the future of this channel, make sure to check that out. I'll put a link to that in the description below. Otherwise, I hope you enjoyed this and you have a great time out in the shot. Have fun building.